Portions of this video are in a stereoscopic format that requires NTSC video and special glasses. Without these, you will see a flickering doubled image during these portions. This is normal. Do not adjust your sets. Argos, a display system for augmenting reality, a joint project of the University of Toronto and the Defence and Civil Institute of Environmental Medicine. Argos means augmented reality through graphic overlays on stereo video. Argos uses computer-generated stereoscopic graphics to enhance stereoscopic video images of the real world. Instead of trying to create virtual or artificial worlds, Argos creates a reproduction of the real world and augments it with computer graphics and can thus display many types of information in as natural a form as possible. The main application of Argos is in the field of teleoperation, that is, doing a job remotely with a robotic manipulator. The Argos project began in 1987 with the goal of making it easier to use a teleoperated vehicle. We identified two key problem areas with most telerobotic systems. First, the feedback to the operator is generally inadequate. Second, telerobots can be very complicated to control. We begin with the visual feedback system. This is the main source of information for the operator. Most telerobots in use today are equipped with regular video cameras and television displays. These systems are monoscopic or two-dimensional, and working with them is similar to doing something with one eye shut. While you can still do the job, it's a lot harder to see exactly where things are. Everything appears flat or two-dimensional, and depth can be ambiguous. Operators of such telerobots must learn how to use these 2D images in a way to which most of us are not accustomed. With enough training, most operators can do their jobs, but often they can't do them quickly or accurately. Using regular video systems makes it hard to determine where things are located in space. The single eye view means that operators must watch for shadows and reflections to figure out where they are. In this example, the operator can't tell how far away the can is, and in fact is only able to find the can by hitting it with the manipulator. This sort of behavior is not generally recommended, particularly when working in a hazardous environment such as a nuclear power station. Unfortunately, with regular video systems, there is no choice. And now, taking into account the fact that he misjudged the location of the garbage bin on the first try, our operator allows a little extra room this time, only to discover that the claw was lower than he thought. In order to overcome the limitations of standard video displays, we developed a stereoscopic or 3D video system. Rather than seeing a flat two-dimensional view, our operator, when wearing the required glasses, is able to see a full three-dimensional image. It is somewhat similar to looking through a window. Using the stereoscopic system, our operator can immediately see the relative locations of objects at the remote site and is able to accomplish his task successfully on the first try. Telerobot operators strongly prefer using a stereoscopic video system. Many studies have shown that they require less training when using it and can perform tasks faster and with fewer errors. Our stereoscopic video system uses a pair of cameras, one for each eye. We switch rapidly back and forth between the left and right cameras and display the alternating images on the same monitor. The liquid crystal glasses have electronic shutters that change from clear to black. The shutters are synchronized with the cameras so that through the left lens you only see the image from the left camera, and through the right lens you only see the image from the right camera. The left and right images are slightly different. Our brains interpret these differences and allow us to perceive the depth of the image directly. If there are any glasses available, please put them on now. They will fit over most eyeglasses. The image on the screen is switching back and forth between mono and stereo so that you can see the difference. With most monitors, you may notice some flicker. This is unavoidable. Standard video monitors are not designed to be able to produce a flicker-free stereoscopic image, but they are cheap and readily available. Flicker-free displays are available, but they cost considerably more. It may take a moment for your eyes to become accustomed to the new image. Notice how the circular logo seems to actually change shape, and how the tips of the pliers are clearly curved only in the 3D image. Our goal is to make telerobots easier to use. We've looked at the flow of information from the machine to the user, and as we've seen, stereoscopic systems are a great improvement over standard monoscopic displays. The second part of our work examines the flow of instructions from the human to the machine. Currently, operators control the robot manually. They must devote most of their attention to driving the machine, generally using complicated control panels with many switches and levers. We would like to make the robot more independent so that we can simply tell it where we want it to go and let the robot drive itself there. In order to accomplish this using today's technology, 
We need to be able to give the robot precise coordinates. Operators can't do this directly. People aren't very good at making absolute judgments of position. However, when using a stereoscopic display, people are quite good at making relative judgments of position. So, if we have a pointer of some kind, and we can detect the current location of that pointer, we can let the operators move this pointer around in the remote scene to indicate where they want the robot to go. And so, using our Argo system, we've developed a computer-generated virtual pointer. This pointer can look like anything we desire. Here we've drawn it as an arrow 20 centimeters across and 10 centimeters high. In this version of the virtual pointer, the computer makes no attempt to interpret the video image at all. Instead, it creates a carefully calibrated image of the pointer so that its dimensions are as realistic as possible and relies on the human operator to interpret the video image. When the operator aligns the pointer with some location in space, the computer knows where it is drawing the virtual pointer, and so therefore it knows exactly where the operator is pointing. You will notice that there is a thin line connecting the current location of the pointer with the left edge of the chair. This is our virtual tape measure. We can use it to measure sizes and distances in the video scene. Studies have shown that people are able to use the virtual pointer with essentially the same accuracy as a real pointer. Using our Argo system to generate a virtual pointer, we create a new telerobotic system in which the computer generates graphics and controls the robot, and the human operator interprets the stereoscopic video and gives instructions. In this way, we make effective use of the capabilities of both people and machines. We use human senses to accomplish what technology can't, and we free the operator from having to control the telerobot manually. The virtual pointer can be used in a wide variety of ways. For example, we can use it to indicate a destination for an intelligent telerobot, or we can draw a path for the robot to follow. Using a glove input device to control a virtual hand, we can use computer-generated objects to manipulate real ones. The virtual pointer and virtual tape measure represent the first simple applications of Argos. We can create graphic images of any complexity we desire, limited only by the speed of our computer. For example, rather than simple two-dimensional images, we can generate complex wireframe images and use these augmented edges to enhance the video image. In this mock-up of a shuttle bay, the graphics help make the edges within the bay more visible. Because there is no air in space to scatter the light, shadows are completely black. Anything in shadow is invisible. But if the computer knows what is out there, either from information stored in a database or by detecting something with non-visual sensors, it can augment the video image, enhancing visible objects and making hidden ones visible. In a more earthly example, in this scene we generate a wireframe outline of a table and chair. By carefully calibrating our graphics with our video, we are able to give our operators an accurate image of where things will be located in space. If we color our image in, we can make it appear as realistic as desired limited only by the power of our graphics computer. In this scene, we see a virtual robot in a real environment. If this were a factory, for example, it might be possible to teach very expensive industrial robots their tasks without actually taking them offline, using a very natural grab-and-move technique. This teaching technique could save industry a great deal of time and money. This computer desk is being drawn in real time by a powerful workstation. If we have even more computing power, we can make the image indistinguishable from real objects. We are just starting to explore the potential of Argos. Virtual pointers, virtual tape measures, image enhancements, robot control, and object simulations are just the beginning. We are currently exploring ways of combining machine intelligence with human intelligence, electronic sensors with human senses, by combining the strongest talents of both humans and machines, we create an augmented system in which the whole is certainly greater than the sum of its parts. The Argos technology you have seen today was developed in the Department of Industrial Engineering at the University of Toronto under contract for the Defense and Civil Institute of Environmental Medicine.
Funding for this video was provided by the Defense and Civil Institute of Environmental Medicine. This video is copyrighted by Her Majesty the Queen and Right of Canada, as represented by the Minister of National Defense, 1993.